Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. I said to myself today that I need to do something other than crochet but here I am on YouTube so I guess I lied to myself yet again. <laughs> Without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowdus. Those are my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we have a brand new pattern by Jewel Washington of North Knits. She's come up with a beginner level cowl that is absolutely spectacular. Don't underestimate the simple because these make for great gifts for Christmas. So today we're gonna cover her pattern today. We're gonna go in a beginner level format because it is a beginner pattern and we're gonna take it nice and slow and let's begin the journey with Jewel now. So if you're new to crochet this is a crochet pattern. It's simply just one page this particular one and this has an instruction of repeating the same row over and over and over a total of eight times. So we have to get ourselves started for this. It's using a size M as in Michael or N as in Nancy crochet hook. That's a US measurement but if you're Canadian like I am it's a nine millimeter um, hook that you can use. So this particular example is using Bernat softy chunky yarn. It's a really big ball and you just need one ball of that and that's where we're going to begin. The abbreviations for everything that's in the, this particular instruction is provided here. So you see everything here. So there's no instruction here that is not in here. So that's why those particular abbreviations change every time there's a different pattern. So it's a really neat idea. Also currently Yarn Inspirations has dates on their PDF. So if there's ever a change and you're using a certain date. So this is October 19th of 2021. So if something else comes out in the future and it's a revision this date here will change. So this is a really uh, fabulous idea and we're going to get ourselves started and I'm gonna show you how to hold the hook and yarn next. So let's cover on how to hold the hook. Here is the L or eight millimeter. So I'm using a different size than what the pattern is suggesting. Again you can use your own creativity when it comes to this. Just note that I am moving down one hook size so it will make the stitches a little more tighter and that's something that you can decide for yourself. So this particular one has a flat top here. So it's nice and flat. So when you rest your thumb, so I hold my hook like it's a butter knife and like this. Some other crocheters which I'm not one of them hold it like a pencil. I find this very uncomfortable and it doesn't work for me. So my mom taught me to crochet in this format. If you were to decide to do crochet I would recommend that this is the way that you're gonna hold it in the long term because of the motion of going like this you can impact your wrist in the future and of course any kind of repetitive motion always impacts your hands in any way. So what's happening here is that when I push here and this is the flat spot the this particular area stays up. So I can look away and know when I hit the flat spot with my, my touch then I know that this is facing up. So the anatomy of the hook is the head, the throat and the shaft. The shaft is what's determining the stitch uh, tension itself. So when I go to work with this I want to slide the yarn all the way to get the circle motion of the of the hook so that each stitch has the same um, look and that's important for that. So that's what we're going to do. So you have to decide if you're going to hold your hook this way. I'm not the right host for you but if you want to continue with the butter knife I'm all yours. Let's show you how to hold the yarn next. So let's go over holding the yarn and your hand. So whatever hand is not being used to hold the hook. So if you're right handed you might be a right handed crochet but there's always people that are right handed and, and crochet left handed. That's up to you. So that's not a debate here. You do what's, you do what's, you do you. <laughs> so what we have here is that you're going to use the hand that is not holding the hook to lead the yarn to the hook. And how you're going to do that and this is my own way but most crocheters do it this way. So if you have another way then that's up to you. Daniel crochets like he's knitting and so he releases the hook but his projects are exceptionally small because he's a lot more tighter than I am because of the way he's doing it. So I want you to put your hand down and I want you to lay the yarn over top. Please do that now. Did you do that? Okay. So what I want you to do is that I want you to raise your pinky. So raise the pinky up and then put your hand back down. Did you do that? 
Okay. Now what I want you to do, just pull a little bit more yarn here. I want you to just rotate your hand like this. Did you do that? <laughs> now what I want you to do is that I want you to grab your middle finger and your thumb and pinch. And when you go to pinch, I want you to pinch the yarn itself. Did you do that? Now, when you're crocheting, this finger here is operating as to, as as a tension guide. So if you need more yarn, right, then what you're going to do is that you'll automatically do it in time. You'll lower this and it will provide more yarn to this. If there's too much yarn, you move this finger back and it pulls the yarn backward like that. The other thing that's happening and let's just rotate your hand like this and let's hold. Did you do that? See this here? This is the other part of the tension. So you're not only controlling the tension here but you're controlling it here. So if I need more yarn I will just lift off my pinky and this will provide absolutely no tension to the yarn ball itself. If I don't want any more yarn I automatically just close my pinky down and I close it. So if you're wearing rings this is why you never ever see me wearing rings. Um, if you're wearing rings you may not get that that closing motion. Some crocheters they literally will wrap around like that. You just gotta watch that. You might get a yarn burn if you do that. So that's something that you have to decide. So now you have your yarn in your hand. So let's recap. So let's recap what you did. You put your hand down and then you laid the yarn on top. You then lifted off your pinky like this. And so it's underneath your pinky. You then rotated your hand up like this and then you used your middle finger and your thumb to pinch this yarn. And now your hand is in position. So what I want you to do is that we're now going to do an exercise of tension. So if I want more yarn here I'm just gonna pull this and using your hand back here if I want more yarn I'm just gonna open up and you can pull. Okay stop. Close your hand and you should not be able to pull any more yarn. I want more yarn. Open. Close. No more. This is like red light, green light for squid games. Okay so that's what I want to do. So that's my tension guide there. So open, close, open, close. Red light, green light. <laughs> okay so we're gonna rotate and you're going to pinch again. So what I want to do is that I want to show you how to do a slip knot. The slip knot is the first element of your crochet in order to do it. Crochet if you haven't realized by now is a simple of, of tying knots within the hook. So with crochet the difference of crochet and knitting is crochet makes a stitch so it, it starts a stitch finishes a stitch. With knitting it makes a stitch but keeps the stitch open and it's not until the end of the project that you actually close the stitches. So that's the difference and that's why you can frog meaning to rip out, rip it, rip it, get it, get it. <laughs> so that's why you can actually um, rip out your crochet a lot easier because each stitch is actually done and completed each time. Let's begin our slip knot procedure and this is your first knot that will get you started today. There are several ways to do a slip knot but I will show you the way that my mom showed me and this has always worked for me and hopefully this is good. I want you to place your finger like this. I'll hold. You ready? I want you to get the other yarn in your hand. This is your hook hand and I want you to place it over top of your hand like this over top of the finger. I'll hold. And then I want you to come back down. And then I want you to come back up. And then back down. Okay. 
Are you ready? I'm gonna show you one more time. So like this, it's in front of your hand, behind, back up, and behind. You can replay this if you need to. I want you to grab the rest of your three fingers that are back here and rotate your hand so that those three fingers are going to grab this yarn strand and this together as one. What this is doing is providing tension so that you can play leapfrog and this is how I describe this. So recap, wrap, wrap, close, you're good. It's that fast. Now this is a diving board. We're gonna play leapfrog. This is leapfrog one and two. So we're gonna start the game of leapfrog. He's already in position. We're gonna get this frog to leap over and when he leaps over he's gonna end up at the end of the diving board but not all the way off. So leap and I'll demonstrate this three times. So this is the first demonstration. So he leaps then you're going to grab the other frog because he's ready. He is so excited that when he goes to leap that he misses the frog completely and misses the diving board and comes up over top of your finger and that is your slip knot there. So you can remove your finger and that is your beginning knot. Let's show you again. Leap frog. The back frog wants to leap over the first one and that frog is other frog is so excited when it leaps, it leaps completely off the finger and back around and falls off and that is your slip knot. One more time because it's fun. So let's play leap frog. So leap, so excited leaps right off and down and that is your slip knot to begin. Noticing that I could take my finger out, it's not going anywhere so you don't need to panic. So now what you're going to do is insert your hook and the yarn that is going towards the ball is the yarn you're going to pull and that creates your knot. So when you create the knot here, don't put it around here so it's like tying down a boat to a dock. You want a little bit of play and that's what we're gonna get. So here's a quick demonstration on how quick this normally is. So you're just gonna slip in and off. Okay, one more time. I usually put the hook in, pull it off, but you can take your finger out too. So let's talk about how to get your hook out of a stitch. That's next. To get the hook out of a stitch, you always have to turn it upside down. So let's look at the anatomy of this slip knot here or any knot when it comes to crochet. It's the shape of a tear drop that's upside down. So when the hook goes in, you can put the hook in any angle going in but you can only get it out in one direction. So if you were to pull at the hook right now, it a snag and catch it snags. You see the only way that you can get it out is by turning it completely upside down and using your hand you lift a little bit and this will pull it so that that hook does not catch on the underside. Right? So if you don't turn that over it'll catch. So if you use the natural push and so you just lift it slightly and pull it and then that releases the hook out. And this is your first slip knot. So let's begin again and now we're going to reposition everything and we're now going to start in the project itself and I'm gonna show you some tips, uh, lots of tips I guess. So let's begin the project now. So you don't have to restart if you're already ready to go. So we're gonna create our slip knot to begin and insert your hook. Now we're going to position. You can lay down your hand, turn and when you go to pinch, I want you to pinch, remember how we pinch the strand? We're going to pinch the slip knot itself. So let me turn over my hand. Do you see that? Not awesome. So now what we're going to do is what's called as a chain and the first slip knot on here never counts as one. So it's always just your starting because it disappears in the future. So um, Jewel is asking us to chain 112. Here is my tip. What you want to do is that it's called yarning over. So you don't wanna go in like this and pull this through. It'll snag onto itself. So you wanna create 
a yarn over. So you want to yarn over the hook like that. I call it like a row boat. So row, row, row your boat. And in order to get this hook out of this, it has to turn upside down. So row, row, row your boat, turn it upside down and pull through. And that was the first chain. So remember what I said about the anatomy of the hook. When you pull through, you have to slide this down to the shaft. It's the largest spot of the hook so that it measures the amount of yarn that you need in order to have that stitch. So that was one. So you have to do that 112 times. So you're just going to wrap and turn over and pull through and slide it down the shaft. This is two. Wrap three. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. And this is where I'm gonna have you hold for a second. Jewel is asking us that when we chain that we're not going to twist our chain. So what I want you to do, we just finished on number 10 and you're gonna do the rest on your own but pull your hook out. Come back to the very beginning of the chain and insert from the behind and just come through like this. So you're going to ignore that on your hook going forward and so you're gonna put that loop back onto here. And what this will do when you're chaining with this, this will keep the orientation of this chain from twisting. This is a tip that's never really shared much. So when we go to start again, so let's just say we're gonna do number 11 and I'm ignoring this and 12 and 13 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So now you're going to keep on going till you get to 112 and that's where you're gonna meet me next. So now's the time to put me on pause and I will continue in just a few seconds for now but I also have to do 112 on my own. So we currently have 20 and I'll be right back in a moment. So once you have your 112, for this particular pattern say you had 110, 111, there's no crochet please. Nobody's really gonna know the difference. The difference will be that if you are missing um, chains then it will just be smaller, right? So this is one of those ones where the stitch pattern does not rely on you to hit 112 or it's not possible. Now because I had you hold this on here, what your next part is going to be after you get your 112, you're just gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull through the, that one. So it's like you're making a chain and you're going to slide this up and over the hook too. And that's going to make this the center ring and it does a nice seamless join. So make sure it stays nice and tight and we're going to begin this the first round of actually crocheting on this chain and I'm gonna show you some secrets with that. So what we have now is that we have the complete ring of your project. So it's completely done as a circle. So we're now going to begin and we're looking for the um, pattern here and we need to chain only one. So usually with half double crochet we chain two but um, uh, Jewel is an experienced crocheter and I understand why she's chaining one because it looks better. So you're just gonna chain one. So it's like what you did here but you're gonna chain one. Now in the first one here, if you turn it over, see how this is a stitch work? Turn it over and get the back hump. It looks like a serpent's back. That's where I want you to play. And you're going to play within the serpent's back that comes directly out of this stitch 
it's right here. And you're going to half double crochet. So let me demonstrate how the half double crochet is done. So when we yarned over we were just pulling through but this case, this case we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna dive immediately into the back of the serpent's back right here. And you're just going to slide it through and it's only one strand and you're gonna slide through and there will be three loops on the hook. I'll demonstrate this several times. You're then going to yarn over this strand here and you're just gonna pull through the stitch itself which is the back loop. Ignore these two for now and pull through. Make sure you do slide it down the shaft and now you're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. That's a half double crochet. So yarn over and pull through all three and your first stitch is now complete. Once you have the first stitch the chain will stay turned upside down and you'll see the serpent's back. And so the next stitch is right here. See how this one's lifting off? So the bottom of this will look nice and clean. This is why I'm having you go in the back. So here's where we're gonna play. Yarn over, go in the back. Straight on through. It's only one strand of yarn. Yarn over and pull through just that one strand. Make sure it goes down the shaft for the distance that it, you need and then yarning over pulling through all three. And there's another half double crochet done. So let's demonstrate this. So yarn over, come to the next piece of the serpent's back. Think about it like a stegosaurus. I think that they have the plates on the back, right? Pull through and pull through all three. Yarn over and keep moving down your chain. So it's a nice solid stitch using thick yarn. Do you understand that? So what I want you to do, just put me on pause now and I will meet you at the end of this round and it will take me back to where I started and I'll show you to make sure that you're getting off to the right track and then we're gonna cover the next row or round I should say and that will be the same round for the remaining of your entire project going from that point and I'll see you back here in a moment. So I'm coming along to the end and I just wanna go all the way around and my goal here is to not twist this row. So I'm coming right into the very end and just pulling things tight and that's it. So what I have to do is that I have to slip stitch. So let me bring this up. I have to slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. So this is called the slip stitch. So I'm just gonna go into the top of the stitch, yarn over, pull through and through. But before I do that I wanna make sure that this is not twisted. I, had, I didn't check that. So I want you to follow the outside and follow it around and make sure that when you follow your finger around that your finger is going to be on the same side. So with, if I followed this around for example and when I came around that I was on the underside here then it means that I have a twist in it. So if I followed the outside all the way around I know that this is completely flat. So it should look like a fan belt for a car. And this is where we're going to begin round number two. So let's put, put this back into our hands and let's do round number two which is the repeat uh, for eight more times after we do it the first time. Let's begin. To do the next round number two and you'll do it eight more times after this is that you're going to start and you're gonna chain one. Now she's saying to do it on the, on the back loops only. So in crochet, do you see how there's two strands? And that's a stitch. If you use the strand that's closest to you only, just the one, that is called the front loop. If you use 
the other strand coming down and split it and go into the back. This is called the back loop. So it's the loop that's furthest away from you to remember on how to do that. So Jewel wants us to half double crochet in the back loop only. So you already know how to half double crochet but now you're going to work on the back loop only. So wrapping and just dive into the back loop only. Yarn over, pull through and then pull through all three. This is going to create the lines that you see within her sample. So now you see the next stitch, yarn over and go into the back loop only. So just divide that and just go into the back. It's creating a line on the front side. So this is a nice way, simple way to get texture. If you prefer and you're not comfortable, you can go through both loops and still have a beautiful project. You just will not have those lines that's in the sample. So you decide what's right for you. Remember creativity is about experimenting and when you do things in a consist consistent manner, it's not a mistake, it's creativity at play. So um, there's a lot of people in crochet that think that they're screwing up but if they keep screwing up the same way then it means that it's just an, uh, a design technique and not really a mistake. So do you see they're ending up with the line and so on the back it looks like this. The line will only be shown on the front side when we go to do that. This back loop only if you're absolutely new to crochet is used a lot with brims of hats to create an elastic look and it's also very texturally pleasing as well. So what I want you to do is continue all the way around on the back loop only with half double crochet and I'll pick you up at the next uh, stopping point in just a few seconds from now. So I'm coming back around and I'm just coming to very my very, my very last one sorry. And so what this is, see this? This is that slip stitch that joins it. People think that's a stitch and it's not. So if you add something there it's going to create an extra stitch. So it'll never truly be flat. So you're just going to slip stitch to the first half double crochet. Jewel's idea and as an experienced crochet I know this is that her chain one really does help hide in that slip stitching. So you're just gonna start the next round which is gonna be the same with what you already know and I'm gonna show you a few other tips while we're here. So we're just gonna chain one and again starting in the back loop only and going all the way around. Okay. So what I want to show you what happens if you have a knot in the ball or the balls run out and you want to use something else. I'm going to show you the tip on how to be able to change the yarn over so that um, in the mid middle of a, of a row like this or around and it's really quite seamless. So let me intentionally cut the yarn and I'm like oh my goodness I'm going to run out of yarn. <laughs> Talk about fake moment right? So you wanna leave a, a relatively generous piece here and you're going to crochet the next one. So we're half double crocheting in the back loop. So when you're going in you wanna come through and you wanna pull. Now this is where I want to change the yarn to something else. So if it can be a different color. The color doesn't matter. So what I want to do is create that slip knot that we talked about at the beginning with the new yarn. And I want you to put this yarn onto the hook And that'll be, so instead of just wrapping the yarn and pulling through all three, this is going to act as that. So you're just gonna pull that loop all the way through and then that will lock that new strand here. Now the existing strand, what I want to do with that, you're not done with that. Okay, so you've got the starting strand and the existing finishing strand. So when you go to do the next stitch, you're gonna wrap and when you go into the next stitch, you wanna put the two strands so that they're on top of the row so it gets stuck up underneath. And you're gonna pull through and then pull through all three. Keep these relatively taut so don't let them loosen off too much and you want to crochet several times over top of that. So move into the next one. Just keep it in your hands. Let the hook glide underneath those and see this strand is wrapping around it to trap it underneath and you're going to double crochet is what you already know and I would recommend doing about two inches of that. 
once you do it the first time they just kind of stay in your hand normally. What you could do from this point then just make sure everything looks like it's normal. So you can't even tell where you did that and you're gonna turn it to the back side of the project. And again if you see anything that's imperfect, imperfect, uh, imperfect now's the time to pull. You are going to place this strand on what is called as a tapestry needle. And you are going to stay on the back side of the project and drag it through the stitch work underneath going back in the opposite direction. Go through some of those fibers, capture it right in and you're gonna come backward and you're gonna pull through. When you pull on it, don't pull on it so tight that it's changing the shape of anything. So now the first time through just make sure you pull on it so it looks normal. And then you're gonna go back in the opposite direction through a slightly different path. If you go in the exact same path it will just fall out. And finally a third time is a charm. So a slightly different path again and you're staying on the back side of the work. And once you're there you can safely just trim your yarn. That one's done. And so you'll take the other strand that is also loose and you'll do the exact same thing with. So you'll do it with both of your strands. Some people including myself they just crochet up over top it and they just snip it. But if this is a wearable you wanna take that extra time to be able to hide it in and again staying on the back side. So remember that yarn strands are never unlimited. There's always a stop and start and usually if there's not in your ball what this is is the industrial cone jumping from one cone to the other. So instead of resetting the machine completely from scratch they tie the ends of the industrial cones together and if there is a knot it's usually the, the bounce of one cone to another. And now you can trim it. Now you can just turn your project back around and put your hook back in and you can barely see that you even did that. So then you just keep on with the motion of the ocean and you can go all the way around on the back loops only. So that's a way to be able to uh, deal with that. And of course I got 300 watts of light blasting out this thing so you can clearly see where it's kind of hidden in behind but on regular light you would probably not even see that. So go all the way around and I'll show you another technique of finishing a yarn and adding a different color at the end of a round just in case you wanna have a striped uh, cowl as well. So let's cover that in a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around. How many stitches do you see that are left? Is it one, two, or three? I'll hold. You decide count. One, two, three. What do you think? If you said one that's not right. If you said three that's not right it's two. Remember that this is the slip stitch line. So you technically only have two stitches left. So what I'm gonna show you next, so let's just get these final two. I'm going to show you a technique of changing out your yarn color completely. So say you want stripes. So you want to at the end of this slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet and I want you to end the color. So like I kinda showed you before we're gonna snip it and I want you just to pull this through. So just yarn over pull through and tug on it tight and turn it around to the back side and I want you to grab your tapestry needle once again and I want you to go through the stitch work on the back and I wanna drag it through how many times back and forth do you remember? If you said three you deserve a cookie. So go grab yourself some cookies and I want you to keep going and get this in. I like to weave in my ends as I go. It saves a big project of having all these tails at the end to deal with and you'll wanna do that with the very starting one as well. So back and forth I'm not gonna do that with you on camera at the moment. So I want to start another color and let's begin to do that and I'll show you how that's done. 
So let's begin and I already showed you how to do a slip knot at the beginning of today's tutorial. So you're just gonna put this on the hook. Remember that we're playing in the back loop only. So when you go to attach you wanna stay in the back loop or you'll have an imperfection right at your seam line. So diving only into the back loop first with this already on and grabbing the strand that's leading to the yarn ball. I want you to yarn over and pull through so it locks that into position, tighten things up. You're then going to chain one and in the same back loop I want you to half double crochet. Now I'm going over top of this straggler to trap it into position but again you'll drag it about a couple inches and then you'll use your tapestry needle to weave it in. So starting in the back loops only which you already know is that you're just adding this color into position. So it's very seamless and it looks awesome. So I feel like this is enough of the strand to cover so I'm gonna just pull on it, throw it to the back and then I'll use a tapestry needle later on to be able to, to do it. So I'll continue with the back loops only all the way around and I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way around. It's already what you already know. It's just a different color and you wanna continue all the way to the beginning to where you did. Okay, so that's it. So now you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning. Now I already showed you how to, when we change colors how to finish this off. So you can go as big as you wanna go and uh, you're going to notice that this is quite an easy pattern to do and hopefully that you enjoy it. So at this moment let me just quickly show you to fasten off just to say that we did it. So let's just say it's big enough and it's thick enough and you're happy with it and you're ready to throw on some gift wrap or whatever you're gonna do with it. This is a great charity project as well if you're thinking about inflating some charity donations. So let's come in behind. So you're noticing that I turn to the back of the work and any loose ends that I wanna do drag in through a total of three times. So once, twice, and three times is a charm. I used to when I first started just to drag the yarn in through with my crochet hook but it always falls out, always. So this is a great way to never have it fall out. You can turn it right down and it's good. So you'll always see a seam line in your project. It's just one of those things of crochet and again you'll wanna do the hiding of the loose ends at the beginning but you can see it looks pretty amazing. So that's it for now. This is a free pattern available to you and this has been uh, written by uh, Jewel Washington of North Knits for yarnspirations.com. See ya and bye bye.